All right. Good evening, everyone. So thank you very much for taking the time to join us tonight. And welcome to today's webinar, where we will be introducing NTUC Learning Hub's Skill Future Career Transition Program and answering any questions you may have about transitioning to these careers. So I'm Chu Tian, an ICT Product Manager at NTUC Learning Hub, and I'll be the host of this webinar today. So throughout the webinar, if you have any questions, you can enter them into the Q&A box in the control panel below. You should see this button uh, called Q&A. Uh, just enter your questions there and we'll address them throughout the webinar and during the Q&A session at the end. So this is tonight's agenda. Coming up, I will share an overview of this program. And thereafter, you can hear from each of our subject matter experts who will dive a little deeper into each program and then we will end up with a Q&A session. So let's start. What is this Skills Future Career Transition Program all about? So this program is actually supported by Skills Future Singapore and is a train and place program designed to support mid-career individuals in acquiring industry relevant skills to improve their employability and pivot to new sectors or job roles. So trainees will attend our training courses in addition to some career advisory services and employment facilitation. So one of the key features would be that we have an industry relevant program. All right, our program is actually designed in collaboration with leading knowledge partners and subject matter experts such as Microsoft, AWS, KPMG, etc. And features industry relevant courses and certifications to ensure your smooth transition to your desired role in the workplace. And secondly, we have capstone projects and on the job training. So, what is this about? In addition to structured training, you will actually have several opportunities to apply what you have learned on a real world problem through capstone projects on the job training in the form of independent, independent or group work. All right. And thirdly, you will receive career advisory services to enhance your employment prospects. So let's, let me share more about that. So throughout the program, our career facilitation team will actually be working with you to support you via one, career resilience executive workshop with E2I. Second, job matching initiatives and regular career fairs and webinars. Thirdly, personalized virtual advice on resume writing, interview strategies and techniques. And lastly, a digital career coach via a career agility hub application that you can use throughout your career with a premium access worth $24. And just to show, um, NTC Learning Hub actually has a very strong track record in delivering placement-based programs. And we have actually successfully placed our trainees from previous placement-based programs in these companies. But do take note that uh, this SkillsFuture Career Transition Program doesn't have any placement guarantee. Okay. So in designing these programs, I want to share that we actually studied in-demand skills and jobs reported in the market and make sure that these programs are relevant to industry needs. So if you see here, according to this um, APEC Digital Skills Research Report published by Amazon, there is an increasing trend in adoption of new technologies that has transformed jobs across sectors. And this is what we know and see around us. And this actually is offering us a lot of opportunities to better our skills and pivot to new careers. And as an estimate, Singapore will need about an additional 1.2 million digital workers by year 2025, which is a sharp 55% increase from today's levels. And we hope that through our SCTP design in partnership with knowledge partners and subject matter experts, you can upgrade your digital skill sets and pivot into emerging job roles with strong demand. So just to share briefly about the program eligibility, it's quite straightforward as what you see here. So first is that you must be a Singapore citizen or PR, um, age 21 and above. Second is you must fulfill the minimum entry requirements of each program, which I'll share in a bit. And thirdly, you must attain at least 75% training attendance for each module and pass all associated assessments and projects. Okay, so on to the minimum entry requirements of each program uh, and the overview. So to introduce, we have four programs that will be delivered. One is the SCTP Associate Data Analyst, the Oracle Java Programmer, 
the Digital Marketing and Graphic Design Specialist and the Cybersecurity Associate. So all these four programs will be delivered full-time, meaning 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. each day, and range from 3.5 months to 4.5 months. So if you see the Cybersecurity Associate Program um, is, has a slightly longer duration of 4.5 months. And this is because it actually consists of um, 1.5 months of training together with three months on the job training at KPMG. Okay. So when it comes to entry requirements, um, IT Diploma or STEM Diploma is not necessary across all four programs. All right. So Associate Data Analyst, yes, we need a minimum diploma in STEM. For Oracle Java Programmer, we need a minimum diploma, preferably in STEM, but it's not necessary. For the Digital Marketing and Graphic Design Specialist, we need a minimum NITEC. And for Cybersecurity Associate, we need a minimum diploma in STEM and a minimum two years experience in Network or System Administration. Okay, so when it comes to the uh, minimum two years experience in Network, system admin, uh, network or System Administration, you will be submitting your resume and profile to us for review. So that's where we can um, check to see if you meet this entry requirement as well. With regards to the mode of class conducted, uh, most of them are BLC, standing for virtual life class, all right, which means that you'll be logging on with your laptop onto Zoom um, and uh, whichever official uh, portal we may be using to uh, conduct the class. All right, for digital marketing and graphic design specialists, it will be in a hybrid mode, meaning there will be face-to-face -face sessions as well as virtual live classes, right? And this is because of some uh, software requirements and uh, software applications used in this class uh, that, you know, not every laptop may be able to support. So with regards to the class date, you can note that the uh, data analyst and digital marketing program starts in October and the Java programmer and cybersecurity associate program starts in uh, November. So take note that there are limited seats for these programs this year. So do apply as soon as possible. And all this information is actually listed on our NTC Learning Hub landing page uh, for SCTP. So you can always check back to find a review again. So if you're interested in this program, the next thing you may ask is what is the program funding and eligibility like? So this is an overview of the funding schemes offered by SkillsFuture Singapore. So firstly, if you are a Singapore citizen or PR age 21 years and above, you will already be eligible for 70% of course fee funding, which is a significant amount. If you are a Singapore citizen 40 years and above, there is some additional funding. So your, your subsidies will be 90% of the cost fee subsidy, uh, of the cost fee. All right. Um, also termed as a mid-career enhanced subsidy. And if you are a citi Singapore citizen that is either a long-term unemployed, so which means unemployed for six months or more, or if you are on financial assistance, for example, Comcare or Workfare Income Supplement, or you are persons with disabilities, then you'll be eligible for 95% of cost fee funding. And on top of all this funding, uh, you can also tap on other schemes such as SkillsFuture Credit, your UTAP, and even your post-secondary education account to offset the remaining course fees. So after all these course fee subsidies of 75%, 70%, 95%, this is the course fee payable. All right, and on top of this funding, you can still tap on other schemes such as the Give future credit, UTEP, and post secondary education account to offset the remaining cost fees. All right, so I'm flashing this here, uh, but if you want to review, uh, again, you can refer back to our SCTP landing page for a closer look at these details. So, just to share also what the application process look like, looks like. So, let's say you know you're interested and you want to apply. So, how does it work? First, you need to scan this QR code to head to our program landing page. And on our landing page, you will see um, these four programs listed here. All right, based on whichever program you are interested to apply, you click on the Apply Now button. You will be led to our external site, Zopa, and there you will click Apply Now again. And then you will be led to a form to fill in your profile and upload your resume. So do note that we need um, complete details 
and also your CV or your uh, resume to fully process your application. So be as detailed as possible when you're filling out the application so we can assess your profile well. And shortlisted applicants will be contacted for an interview. Yeah. So this, this is what the application process will look like from your perspective, right? So first you submit your profile and resume through the Zopa portal. And if you are shortlisted, you'll be notified to attend an interview with us. So then after we will speak to you, interview you, and if you are successful, then we will enroll you into the program where you can commence training and employment facilitation according to the start dates that I shared just now. All right, so this is the URL to our landing page. I'm going to put it in the chat box, but otherwise you can also um, scan this QR code. All right, so up next, I will pass it over to our trainer Chandra, who will be sharing more about the Oracle Java Programmer um, program. All right, meanwhile, I just want to remind everyone that if you have any questions, just pack them in the Q&A box, yeah? Over to you, Chandra. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Chandra. I'll be doing the presentation for this Java program, the CPP Java program. So let's get started with a small uh, presentation that I've just put in here. Okay, so this Oracle Java program, okay, uh, as a part of the SCPP, we are you know offering that as a three and a half month program. Okay, now the typical question that a lot of people ask me when they're you know thinking about joining this program is, you know, so why should I learn Java? Okay, what is the, uh, what is the, the Java standing in the job market? I mean, how, what are my person, what are my chances of getting employed? You know, you know, if I get employed, what will be the position that I should be aspiring for? And what kind of uh, salary am I looking at? These are the common questions that we have in the industry about uh, joining this particular program. And, you know, also the question is, what am I going to learn as a part of this particular program? The three and a half months and how will the program or the schedule be planned for me? Okay, these are the typical questions that I would like to answer in the next uh, 15 minutes. Okay, to get started with, uh, let me introduce myself, uh, Chandra Shekhar. You can just call me Chandra. Uh, I and my team will be executing this particular program. Okay, SCTP Oracle Java Programmer Program. Uh, we have already done it uh, in the other uh, branding, SGUS brand branding. We have done three cohorts for this program already. Okay, close to 60 people we have already trained on the, this particular Java program. And this will be the fourth cohort that, will be, that we'll be doing if you enroll into this particular program. Okay, so about me, I have you know 22 plus years of experience. I'm a technology specialist. I predominantly work as an enterprise architect in the consulting profile that I you know also do along with the training profile that I carry out. Okay. Now, one of the first things that I would like to highlight for you is okay, as you're already aware of, computers are everywhere. Every industry is uh, dominated by the usage of computers, and we need computer literates. Okay, as in the introduction, my colleague has already mentioned. Okay, there is a huge demand for this, you know, computer literacy in Singapore itself. You know, people are, you know, looking for programmers, they're looking for administrators, graphic designers, security experts, and other profiles also. Okay, so computers are there all around us, and you know, we need to be proficient with them. Okay, so one of the first things that people talk about when talking about programming is, you know, coding, programming or coding. These are synonymous words. Okay, so basically you're providing a set of instructions, you know, asking a computer to do some complex or repetitive task. It might be as simple as two plus two, or okay, two hundred plus four hundred ninety. Now, you know, doing the same activity over and over again. It can be simple activities like this, okay, or it can be complex activity like this, and you want to do it repeatedly. Okay, now that's where you know you can't you can't individually sit and do that. So basically, you write a program for that. Okay, so you're giving a set of instructions to the computer to carry out those activities. Now, when you take these multiple instructions together and put them or collate them together, that becomes a program. Okay, so you are just taking a set of instructions and grouping those instructions into what we call as a program. So a program for doing addition a program for doing subtraction, a program for doing division, and a program for doing multiplication. So each program is specialized in doing one particular mathematical operation 
And when you combine all of them together, that becomes your calculator. Okay, that becomes your calculator, and that's you know typically what we call as a software. So you write individual instructions, combine them to create programs, and you take multiple programs and join them together to create a software. So that's typically where a software comes into picture. Okay, so as a software programmer or a Java programmer, your responsibility is to write code, combine that to create programs, and eventually put them together to create different pieces of software. Okay, right now I'm using PowerPoint software. Okay, and I'm also using another software to do all this on screen annotation, drawing on my screen. So that's a different software that I'm using. So all these softwares is the responsibility of the programmers typically. But the problem is computers don't speak the language that we speak. Computers are, you know, speaking the language of zeros and ones. Okay, and we can't speak that language zeros and ones proficiently. Okay, so what is the gap? How do you bridge that gap? Okay, so a computer understands machine language that is zeros and ones. We are comfortable speaking high level language. I'm sure you heard about some of these languages like C, C, and Java. Okay, these are some of the popular languages that I've just listed over here. Of course, there is Python, there's JavaScript. There are so many other languages that are existing in the market. Okay, so we are comfortable speaking high level language. Computers are good at understanding machine language zeros and ones. And someone should be there to translate the instructions from high level to low level, from high level to low level. But before we talk about that translation, let's first understand what are the different high level languages that we have? You know, do we have a choice? Okay. Yes, there's a plethora of languages that are there out in the market over there. Okay, a few of them to start with, you have Java. I'm sure you heard about, you know, Python because most of the Singaporeans, I'm, you know, I'm sure, you know, have attended some form of Python course, you know, online or through YouTube videos. Okay, of course, people coming from computing background, they already are familiar with C++. SQL is also something which is very popular. And JavaScript is ruling the world today. Okay, so these are the, you know, uh, listing of programming languages that are popular out there. Okay, so it's not just these programming languages. There are hundreds or thousands of programming languages that are there out in the market. Okay, but what is it that is you know easy to learn? What is it that's relevant and to the market that we are you know living in? And what is it that fetches me the maximum opportunities in the market? Okay, that's not something you should be looking at. Okay, now once we have this software, okay, as we just said, you know, we talked about coding, we talked about programs, we talked about software. Now the next question is, what is a platform? Okay, so generally when you write a program, the program runs on a given platform. Okay, for example, think about a situation like this, where you have a PC. Okay, now you have MS Paint. MS Paint, you know, the software that's available or MS Word, software that's available on a PC. So here you have the hardware layer. Okay, then you have the operating system layer. The operating system is Windows 10 or 11. Okay, so on the PC, you know, on the personal computer, you have the hardware. Then you have the operating system that is Windows and Windows 10 or 11, and your MS Word and MS Paint runs on top of that. Okay, now on the other end of the spectrum, if you just see, okay, I'm using a Mac. So MacBook Pro, of course, it is having the hardware. Okay, on top of the hardware, there's always the operating system that runs. And for me, I'm using the Mac OS, a Ventura, and I'm using Safari as my software. Okay, Safari as the software that I'm using. Now, if you think about it, Safari is a software that is written for Mac, runs only on Mac. Now, Paint is a software that is written for Microsoft Windows that typically only runs on the Windows operating system. See, most of the software out there in the 70s, in the 80s, and in the 90s also, the software was written either for you know, Windows or for Mac. Similarly, there are other platforms like Linux. There is Solaris, there is HVUX, and dot dot dot. There are multiple of other operating systems that are there. So when you write a piece of software, the software only runs on the machine for which you have written it. Okay, now that was a problem that was there in the you know early 90s. Okay, platform and software are tightly bound with one another. So certain software only works on certain platforms. Okay, that was a typical problem that we had, and 
This is an example of that. Safari runs only on the Mac. And Microsoft Paint only runs on the Windows operating system. Okay, so people wanted to fix that problem. And that's exactly where Java came into existence. Java is the language that was specific, specifically meant to solve that problem of platform you know, dependency. Okay, they wanted to solve the problem and make the software platform independent. Okay, they wanted to make all the software as platform independent. That was the goal behind Java. Okay, so who started Java or where did it start? Java is started as you know a small software, a small project in 1991 at Sun Microsystems. Initially, it was called Oak based on the tree, Oak tree. Then they renamed that into Java based on the coffee beans from Indonesia. Okay, now he is Mr. James Gosling, the father of Java programming language. And the first version of Java came in 1996, the version 1.0. I mean, that's 26 years back. Okay, so we are in the 27th year of Java. But, you know, it's a very old thing. Okay, now, don't be surprised if I say a couple of facts for you. Python is older than Java. Okay, you know, and JavaScript, okay, which was, you know, which is also very popular as of today in the market is only one or two years you know later than java or younger than java so all the technologies that we are using today whether it is java python javascript all these are you know around the same time 89 96 and 97 okay so that's how the evolution or the creation happened for all the software okay one of the best things that happened with java is when java was created they have seen all existing languages at that moment of time like Smalltalk, Ada, Objective C, C or C++. And they have taken the best of all those languages, combined them to create Java programming language. So Java is borrowing from the best. You know, that's how they, the, the objective was to create a language, taking the best out of everything that is existing as of that day and creating something you know better than all of them combined together. So the sum of it is better than the individual parts. That is a very good acronym that we can use for Java. Okay, now Java is platform independent. That means every application that you write in Java can run on any platform. Just to give you an example, think about it. Java application, so MS, you know, as I said, you know, previous example, MS Paint or Safari, they run on the you know, operating system. But Java applications don't run on the operating system. Your application runs on what we call as a Java virtual machine. And that Java virtual machine can be Windows, Linux, or OS X flavors. So there is a level of you know gap that we are creating between the application and the underlying operating system. So they are kind of decoupled from one another. Your application is decoupled from your platform or from your underlying operating system by using what we call as a Java virtual machine. So it doesn't matter which operating system you're running on. If you have a JVM, you can run your application on any platform. Okay, so that's the reason why Java is platform independent. So that was that solved a lot of problems. Okay, you can write one software, run it anywhere. I mean, you know, just let me give you an acronym here. Okay, there is a simple word that summarizes this feature of Java for us. We call it ORA, that is write once, run anywhere. Okay, write once, run anywhere. So you can write a Java application once and you can run it on any platform provided, provided you have the JVM on that particular platform. All that you need is a JVM. If there is JVM, you can run it on any platform, including your Android mobile phones. Your Android mobile phones use JVM inside you know, to run all the applications. Okay. Now, this is the release cycle of Java. As I said, you know, the first version is released in 1996. Okay, that's when the first version came in. Okay, but however, okay, the initial you know development started in 1991. Beta came in 1995, and as you can see, okay, so there is 1.0 1996. Okay, 1.1 97, 98, 1.3 2000, 1.4 in 2002. Okay, and you have around here 2006 is when you know the Java version was running as 1.5 1.6. Okay, but then at this stage, Java changed, you know, from Sun Microsystem to Oracle. Oracle acquired Sun Microsystems, so it has become a part of, you know, Oracle branding. And Oracle, being the, you know, big company that it is, 
they have done a tremendous job with the progress of java they have changed the cycle of life cycle of java so they are releasing newer versions of java every 6 months so think about it this year march we have the version 18 released and now we are in september and there is version 19 also being released version 19 also being released this year just now september 2022 okay uh, around 19th or 20th we have released the newer version of java so every 6 months they are releasing new features they are adding new features giving newer versions of the software so there is continuous development in the world of java now but but still even though the version development is happening every 6 months what is the most popular version of java that is still with version 8 version 8 is the most important you know version of java then version 11 also for the fact that both version 8 and version 11 are lts that is long term supported versions that is long term supported versions hence you know they are you know widely used in the industry the remaining versions are not so widely used but yes version 8 and version 11 similarly version 17 is also what we are looking at next will be used very widely across the industry because version 17 is also a long term supported version so whenever you know this is a generic suggestion for everyone whenever you are using any software always try to see if that particular version of the software is supported for long term that means you will have bug fixes you will have you know patches being released for that particular piece of software if it is supported for the long term okay now when you are working as a java developer you will use the tools to develop the applications okay these are very popular tools that are used you know for application development in java whether it is eclipse intellij j developer or netbeans netbeans is from sun microsystems initially now then it went to oracle now it is a completely open sourced free of cost software of course there is blue j also that is there which is used widely in the academic world for java application development okay now yes i've just just introduced to you java in just like what 6 7 minutes now okay how how popular java is in the market now, as you can see across industries whether it is microservices mobile security social okay or data management artificial intelligence it is either one two or three okay so java is you know widely used in the industry in different verticals okay having said that java is widely accepted whether it is government retail financial manufacturing information technology or telecommunications as you can see the percentages the numbers are being given here so it is being widely used by all across the industry okay different verticals different domains use java widely it's widely adopted you know according to the survey that is being done in the you know year 2019 okay so out of the existing languages people have been asked to choose two platforms as their number one and two choices and java was given 83% chance for that 83% rating in that particular you know poll okay now what are the most popular applications that are being developed on java okay i'm sure everybody heard about minecraft the game okay now that's completely been you know the first version initial version of minecraft okay which is also the best selling video game ever all time okay is written in java minecraft okay then nasa uses you know java for doing the world wind java so this is a virtual globe api so which is used for giving all weather predictions okay weather patterns visualization of cities terrains and tracks all of that is you know it's a free software that nasa provides for the world okay so that is also being completely written in java okay now the you know rovers that have been sent to mars the rovers that are sent to moon were also being written in java the software one piece pieces of software for that particular rovers are also written in java okay now java the one of the most popular use cases for java is android android as we know it has 85% of market share in the mobile industry and the most popular method of developing applications for android is using java programming language okay now uh we have elastic search lucene okay now all of this in short i can tell you this is what supports wikipedia okay this is the you know search engine behind elastic search and lucene were the search engines behind wikipedia and that's completely written in java okay so you, as you can see you know java is used widely in the industry for developing different types of applications and java is also available on the cloud whether it is spring boot gravium 
Micronaut, or Quarkus. All of them are developed in Java. Okay. Now, that's about the quick introduction to Java. Now, let me just quickly go through the SCTP Oracle Java program course. Okay, we are planning to start that on 7th of November up to 28th of February, 2023. Now, this on the 3rd of November, we'll be doing the orientation for the Java SCTP program. Okay, then we, you know, we start the training, three and a half months training with introduction to programming and web development. We'll give you fundamentals about what is programming, what is web development, what is HTML, what is CSS, what is JavaScript, and how do you use those technologies to develop applications for the web, okay? Uh, whether it is web applications, whether it is database applications or desktop applications. We'll be talking about that in the first week of the you know, program. Then after that, for every training, we have a subsequent capstone project where we'll be doing a mini or a micro project, okay, based on the concepts that we have learned the previous week. See, that's the goal. Whatever you learn, you implement them in the capstone, you know, using the capstone project or during the capstone project, we'll be developing mini projects, okay, to get our hands-on ex experience or expertise, okay. Hands on that, then we're going to start with database fundamentals, okay. So the database fundamentals is for five days, where we'll be talking about the concepts about you know what is database concepts how do you create database objects manipulating the data how do you do data storage and administering a database at the desktop level these are the few things that we're going to talk about during this database fundamentals course that's for five days okay then we'll be starting with java sc programming one that's a five-day curriculum where we'll be introducing java from zero okay from you know starting basics fundamental concepts so what is a programming language? So how do you get started with writing simple programs? Then what is object-oriented programming? We'll be talking about different principles of object-oriented programming. And everything will be practicing through hands-on labs. Okay, having said that, to make sure that you get the Java concepts right, okay, after the Java SE programming one, we do a 10-day capstone project. Okay, a 10-day capstone project that will be like completely giving you time to go through every individual concept again, reiterate over it, and get your hands on in that 10 days capstone project. Uh, the last time when we have done this program, we have done a mini bank application in this 10 days, you know, uh, whether it is account management, whether it is customer management, whether it is transactions, you know, debiting, depositing, you know, withdrawing, you know, all these activities. We have done a mini bank project for that you know, capstone project. Then we'll be doing the Java programming too for five days. So where we'll be talking about advanced features like exception handling collections, Lambda expressions, modules, file input output, native input output, security, and JDBC. These are the few things that we're going to talk about in the Java SC programming two course, following which we have a capstone for five days. Then we'll get started with Spring Boot fundamentals. In the Spring Boot fundamentals, we'll be talking about the Spring Framework. What is Spring Boot and what is Spring Framework? How do you develop applications using Spring Boot? Okay, we do a complete hands-on, you know, again, using all the concepts of the Spring Boot, how to develop enterprise web applications, enterprise infrastructure applications using Spring Boot. This is what we're going to talk about in this five-day course. Then follow that with, sorry, uh, this is a 10-day course. Follow that with a capstone and a summative project combined together for 10 days. Okay, so that will be 10 plus 10. In short, the goal and the objective of this program is we don't want you to be only trained without hands-on experience. So the training is for 30 days. The capstone and the summative projects are also for 30 days. So the total duration of the program is for 60 days. So for as much as we train, we also give you hands-on experience. Okay, this is just a snapshot of hardware and software requirements if you are planning to enroll for this particular curriculum. Uh, as my colleague has already mentioned that we'll be doing your PLC classes. So you, you will be using your own personal machines. Okay, so you'll be shared with this presentation later. So you can just uh, go ahead and go through this hardware and software requirements at your convenience. Okay, one of the founders of Reddit, Alexis. Now, this is a quote from him. Coding, it is the most valuable thing you can do for your career. So learning coding is something that is essential for you to do wonders in your career. Okay, so... It just to wrap it up, okay, how much do you make out of it? I mean, yes, of course, you know, we all want to be paid well. Okay, so this is just, you know, I've taken this slide to
today afternoon how much does the java developer make in singapore okay so this is how the metrics looks like for starters it will be around 60k for experienced it can be up to 96k so this is just pure java development so the more skills you put on top of that the more you will be benefiting out of it so thank you very much for this opportunity uh, if you have any questions please drop them on q and a i'll stop my screen sharing over here okay thank you so much uh, sorry i just went a couple of minutes 10 no minutes problem ago. no problem right so i think up next we have our product manager for the digital marketing and graphic design specialist program uh, over to you musan thank you good evening everybody thanks for coming please let me share my uh, slides with regard to digital marketing Okay, good evening again. Uh, my name is Wilson from ICT division, looking after the digital marketing and graphic design specialist program. So the program itself is going to start on the 25th October to uh, 20th January. So, and you may ask why digital marketing or graphic design specialist course? And what does digital marketing do? So basically, digital marketing is to bring attention, the promotion of brands connect with potential customers using the internet and other forms of digital communications like uh, emails, social media, or even your text messages. But who are the ones who does all this? In fact, it is where graphic design specialists come in to support the uh, digital marketing team in order to help them fulfill the connection between the customer and your brands or your product. So um, in itself, this course, there is two job roles. So most of the time people will ask, uh, um, after I study this course, what do I actually do? So in fact, if you look at it yourself, if you are someone who likes to write, then chances are your strength is into digital marketing. But if you are someone who likes to create art, who do design, then you are someone who is good in creating visual concepts to let the consumer be aware and about aesthetic, even to create company logos and brands. So they are both interconnected uh, in, in terms of supporting each other. So this role is in fact uh, important to help each other when it comes to this uh, uh, ways of communication visually, as well as uh, in terms of audio as well. So if you look at the job role itself for digital marketing, there are a few job roles even after you graduate. You can either be a marketer, designer, or even social media or content creator, or even go into e-commerce because we do have uh, photography classes, which I think Don will share with you later. And then uh, we do have multimedia uh, and graphic job role when you know upon graduation can look into this. So, so what is the prerequisite? Uh, either you're from ITE, diploma or university, as long as you have a, a, a C6 in your English, okay? Um, because most of the classes that we taught are all in English. So this is key important in terms of communication. So when it comes to the in-demand uh, job skills and role, uh, we have done a survey uh, at NGC Learning Hub and digital marketing is one of the top in-demand, which is 44% and uh, web or UI UX designer you have 31% uh, in demand. And uh, over here, if you look at even linking itself, okay, uh, digital marketing as well as uh, graphic design is also the top 10 in demand role. Not only you work remotely uh, or globally, there is this demand that uh, even you work locally itself. Um, I have friends who are working in Singapore, but their company is based in uh, Australia, clients in, in China. So they work remotely. And uh, digital marketing and graphic design do not have to be totally you know, uh, based and they have to work in Singapore. You have a big, uh, I'll say, arena out there for you to you know, work on. So what are the, uh, uh, in terms of salary range, um, every year a range is about 60 over 1,000 on average, right? So on average, starting pay will probably be 3,000 plus and depends on your experience, uh, you will probably uh, go more than that. And if you look at the role of a digital marketing, it's in fact very wide because you can either be a social media specialist or you can even be a content marketer. And if you look at the 
uh, uh, example of uh, marketing manager, right? The demand that at least you have 3,000 over job openings, right? Whereas for the graphic design itself, uh, nearly an average starting pay, you're looking at about 64,000 Singapore dollars. And also the same thing depends on your experience and the job pro profession that is linked to graphic design. Uh, upon graduation, you can either be a designer, a web designer, or even a visual designer. So if you look at it, this as a basic uh, designer, starting designer, that's 3,000 over demand uh, job application. So um, looking at this two row, uh, this is the reason why uh, I believe you understand why there's such a demand out there, right? So uh, this is the funding component. If you look here, uh, 21 years and above, you are looking at 70% funding. Uh, with GST, you're paying about 5,007 plus. And uh, if you're a Singaporean age, 40 years and above, right? With GST, you're paying about 2,000 plus, right? And uh, without much further ado, uh, please let me uh, welcome Don and thereafter will be Wani to share with you on the graphic design as well as um, digital marketing. Thank you. Hi, guys. Hi guys, uh, Don. Hello, everybody. Let me just share my screen a little bit uh, on the uh, things I have to present in a little bit. Okay, there we go. Okay, so um, let me just quickly introduce myself. My name is Don. Uh, so uh, I actually manage a, a team of trainers. Uh, we are do, dealing with uh, media production uh, tools, so things like uh, design and uh, photography and also videography. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to just... Okay, so for us, uh, for my team, okay, we are, uh, we are uh, dealing with the graphic design uh, specialist portion. Okay, and then later on, you will be, will be taking over uh, for the digital marketing uh, portion. Okay, now... Um, I just want to very quickly um, talk about the importance of uh, media in today's world. Uh, we are very much connected through the internet and the, 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 the content that we are consuming, I would say like 90% of them are all media related. Okay, so what are we talking about when you say uh, media related? Okay, uh, well, ask yourself where, which was the last video that you have seen. Okay, probably within the last 30 minutes. Okay, what was the last photo that you have seen? Probably within the last 30 minutes. Uh, what was the last design uh, 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 that you have seen? Also probably within the, the last one hour, 30 minutes. Okay, so that's how important media, uh, in, in media is, is in today's world. Uh, and if you think about it, somebody has to be creating this, right? And if it's, if it's that important, and you know that means there's a very good demand for it. Okay, I think just now uh, Wilson was sharing about it already. Okay, so I, uh, I'm i going to, for us, that's what we'll be dealing with. Let, before I go into the causes and uh, what we're going to do, I'm going to also just uh, talk about uh, what can you also do with this uh, uh, um, uh, uh, role itself. Okay, now, so, oops, my apologies. Okay, so, um, there are a few, um, three main uh, um, areas in terms of uh, the career advancement or the pathway, okay? So one is in the area of photography, okay? So in the photography world, what can we uh, look at, okay? We have a product photographer, we have event photographer, fashion photographer, wedding photographer, whom I used to be, uh, which I used to do a lot, Okay, so that's that realm. That's a lot, a lot, a lot a mo more. Okay, that's the it's very, very wide in today's media uh, world. Okay, go and just go and have a look at the the last uh, photo and you see and what genre does that fall into, you know? And then uh, we have the uh, design aspect. Okay, so we are looking at web designer, very relevant. Every other company would have one website. Uh, print designer, we're talking about brochures, uh, banners and stuff like that, uh, brand designer, okay? And we are also talking about uh, a creative uh, design uh, project manager, okay? So that's kind of, that's the kind of uh, um, uh, things that we can look at, okay? 
videography uh, as well. Okay, in the in the world of videography, we have like um video editor. Okay, somebody has to be putting these videos together. Um, um, the video videographer himself, the person who's shooting it, somebody has to be pressing a record button. Somebody has to be putting a good eye to to know what to shoot. Okay, somebody has to be directing. Okay, we're talking about the director. Okay, script writer and stuff like that. So these are the the gener generic three main uh, uh um prongs of uh, things that you can do with uh, media uh related stuff. Okay. Um, today's world we have a few more things that we can uh uh do as well. If you are looking to do something that is uh, more uh that has more freedom to do your own things. Okay, you have your a uh, YouTuber, right? Uh, media entrepreneur. And also, of course, we have our uh, influencer in today's world as well. So these are re really, really uh, uh, relevant. Okay, uh, let me just. Uh, okay, and okay, of course, the next question we'll ask is, what is the benefit of you taking this course? Okay, now the way we we run our courses, okay, we focus on three very important thing. Okay, number one, okay, knowledge. Okay, the physical or, or the, the actual knowledge on how to design something, the actual knowledge on how to use certain software, uh, the actual uh, um, um, uh, knowledge of how to uh, um, um, take a certain photo or what are the things that goes behind a good photo. Okay, so the knowledge itself. Number two, Okay, which I think it's very, very important. Okay, it's the hands-on experience. Okay, all this knowledge that you learn will be nothing if you don't put it into good use. Okay, uh, we will be uh, uh, getting you guys to put your hands on to do certain projects, to do certain tutorials. Uh, uh, later on, I'll show you some of my students' work. Uh, all of you will be doing some of this, or, or rather, some of you who, who are signing up will be doing all those things. Okay, and of course, thirdly, uh, tra training uh, the trainers mentoring. Okay, so we will be going through certain projects with you. And through these projects, we will be mentoring uh, you how uh, you're working with your current project. What can you do better? What is it in the, the, the market outside? Now, this training trainer uh, mentoring portion is where we really share a lot of our experiences as designer, photographers, and vid uh, videographers, video editors, whatnot. This is where it's valuable to listen to this uh, uh, very valuable experience from uh, these trainers. We, uh, we have years and years of experience in this field. And, um, and you know, it's impossible to just get you guys to go through 25 years uh, um, in, in just true knowledge and hands-on experience. So we are here to impart some of the experience that we've gone through, uh, some of our uh, uh, things that we've learned the hard way so that you don't have to, to do it in that hard way. Okay, so we'll be sharing uh, those things as well. Okay, yeah, so these are the main three things what you will be benefiting from the course itself. Okay, um, knowledge is what um, the, the textbook do. Hands-on experience is where you really put your hands on and start doing something. And uh, trainer mentoring is where we give provide you some feedback, what are the, the trends out there, and some of the experience that we have been uh, having. Okay, just to summarize. Okay, so next I'm going to just share about um, the uh, things that we'll be doing. Okay, uh, first area of uh, very important, okay, the visual graphics uh, portion. Okay, you'll be learning about photography how to take group photos, fundamentals of design behind uh, photography. Next, we'll be talking about Photoshop. Okay, you'll be designing, uh, going through uh, technical know-how on photo uh, Photoshop itself. And then lastly, Illustrator, which is a very key uh, software for vector uh, design. Okay, so this is where we go through the technical know-how, okay, for the uh, visual uh, graphics that, uh, so to speak. Okay. Now next, okay, we will move on to the video uh, aspect, okay. Uh, again, in today's world, uh, if you notice or if you remember during the inner show or rather the entire COVID period, right, uh, there was a lot of information that was going through, 
right? Uh, how many packs can dine in? How many packs cannot dine in? And then uh, when do you need to wear a mask? When do you not need to wear? So that's, that's a whole huge chunk of information. And a lot of this was very nicely digested into short videos where uh, all of us and our, our elderly folks can uh, able to very easily understand these things. So video plays a very important part in that aspect. Okay, we will be going through some of this video uh, portion. So we are looking at uh, softwares that we are looking at uh, Adobe Premiere Pro. Okay, you will learn how to do uh, edit, cut, edit, edit uh, videos through uh, Adobe Premiere Pro. And then we will go through uh, After Effects where we'll talk about uh, how do you uh, put graphics together, info graphics together, and how do you uh, present certain uh, important information through graphics and, uh, and uh, yeah those kind of uh, motion graphic kind of uh, stuff, right? Okay, next. Okay, this is where things get uh, very interesting. Okay, so after learning all those things, right? Okay, this is the, the part where we actually get students to work on real-world projects or rather pseudo real-world real world projects. So what we will do is that we will uh, give our, our, our learners, okay, a, a form of a, a project statement. Okay, so um, this is a uh, client so-and-so. Okay, I am uh, looking to have a cafe coming up and I need you to do a logo for me. Okay, these are the XXX uh, uh, requirements that I'm having and da -da 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 -da, and you're supposed to do the real lo uh, logo designs for this particular client. And of course, um, it, it'll be a, a, a sort of a role play uh, kind of approach. So as the, the trainer, uh, the trainer will be your pseudo client. Okay, so you would share with you, okay, these are the things that clients would say. Uh, th these are things that, uh, of course, there'll be the difficult clients and the easier to, to handle uh, clients and we will we will role play with you so that you know you get with that, pro with this capstone project, it gives you a, a glimpse of what to expect when you start working out there, uh, how to deal with clients and stuff like that. Okay, so this is very, very valuable in my uh, own opinion. Okay, now next part, I'm going to show you some of my um, uh, uh, examples of this capstone project so that you guys have a glimpse of uh, after you finish, what, what are you capable of doing? Okay, now these are some uh, real, real projects done by my students. Okay, now so we got our students to do uh, logo design, you know, and some of the uh, uh, brand, brand statements and what, what not uh, that's relating to the uh, uh, logo itself. This is what it looks like. Okay, uh, again, this is this is cafe logo and they are supposed to uh, uh, come up with a certain design ideas, concepts behind it. How do you visualize a certain concept uh, of the brand itself? Okay, I'm going to just very quickly run this through. And uh, this is where uh, students actually uh, sketch out uh, from, from, you know, from nothing, they scratch out something to, and then they uh, to put it into Illustrator and design something out like that. Okay, so this is from zero to a beautiful uh, logo. Okay, again, uh, options of uh, different logos, they do, and then they scan it in, and then they digitize it into uh, uh, logos like this. Okay, and if you if you notice, right, these are all, the writings in there are all um, uh, thought through. Uh, the branding of the, the cafe and the, the lo logos are very much aligned. Okay, so in these, portion we're not only talking about physically how do you get a design done up we're talking about how do you do design thinking what do you think about how do you uh, get elements and put them together into a nice logo not just nice but makes a uh, tells a story uh, that's relevant to the brand itself okay and of course uh, with the brand itself we will follow through with that same brand how do you do a poster design, for example, something like this? Okay, okay. I want to just very quickly highlight one particular uh, project before I finish up. Okay, now what you're seeing here is a design done by uh, one of our students. Okay, uh, this is for a cafe called Alchemy uh, Cafe. This is a made up uh, cafe that they came up with. Okay, and this is the logo itself. Now, I want to elaborate a little bit on what we mean by creative thinking. 
Okay, so for example, so our, our, uh, the students are supposed to present what are the thought process behind uh, the logos that they, they, they have designed. So for this particular design, uh, students, uh, uh, it came off from uh, something like this, uh, alchemical table of symbols, you know, something very mystical and, you know, alchemical kind of things in the uh, uh, very uh, myth, myth kind of, uh, uh, you know, realm. Okay, so then... Uh, there's some stories there, okay? And this is what it came about, okay? So we're talking about test tubes, you know, things that are very uh, uh, alchemy form kind of thing. And they put this L test tube together, simplified the test tube and put two test tubes together. And that's the finalized form. And of course, with that, okay, uh, this is uh, the, the, the logo itself. You can see the love and passion, the mountains is there representing the, the, uh, the brand itself. Okay, so this is what you will be expecting. And of course, the final logo is, looks like something like this. Okay, so I hope I give you some glimpse of uh, how it looks like. That's all on my end. Uh, if there's any question, uh, do drop it in the Q&A. Thank you very much. Uh, I think next I'll pass the, the mic over to Wani. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much, Don. All right, so uh, it's my turn. Yes. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, those of you who are still in the session, uh, thank you for staying on. <laughs> All right, so uh, my part here, if you can see my screen here, I'm going to actually talk about the digital marketing aspect of the digital marketing and graphic design specialist. So digital marketing is basically more than what we think. Yeah, there's actually two words. Yeah, There's actually the digital part and there's actually the marketing part. All right. So a lot of people, especially my students who come to learn digital marketing, normally they, what is the benefit to them? they get to learn two parts of the whole specialization, all right? So I actually saw some of you asking the question in the Q&A. Yeah? You're asking, do you need IT skills to learn digital marketing, all right? Uh, I would say, in short, you at least know how to use Facebook. Yeah, that's, that's bare minimum, guys. That's bare minimum, yeah? So I just answer that very quickly for those of you who are just wondering whether Mm, you really need that in-depth skills to learn the digital marketing or not. But let me show you what you can do once you have the knowledge in digital marketing. Okay, so career options. Now, digital marketer, the, the word, right, it's very general term, right? So actually, you can be a lot of things on the digital, writing things, being a statistician, okay, you can actually help people analyze data. Uh, people who actually do marketing online, they sometimes need to actually go through a lot of data, a lot of small things to actually analyze whether their marketing effort is actually bringing them results or not. And of course, to follow up on what Dawn is showing you, creative, that's another part of being a digital marketer. All right, some of you are gifted. You have some very creative mind and creative skills to uh, show to the world. So you can actually use that as part of your digital marketing uh, tool set, all right, to actually become a great digital marketer. And why I say digital marketer actually is part of a little bit digital in the, aspect, in the, in the, in the uh, area of technical is because actually there is a little bit more technical part of digital marketing, which is what we call the search engine optimization. Yeah, so I mean, uh, all this sounds, sounds like a very big jargon to you, which is why this course is created to help you ease into the world of digital marketing. Yeah, so those of you who actually come from sales background, you probably halfway there, okay, when it comes to marketing something. But those of you who probably don't have marketing background, don't worry because we will actually go through the entire introduction, all right, on how to become a marketer and how to actually put this into practice on the various platforms out there in the internet. Yeah, we're not just talking about Facebook, yeah. We're talking about Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, you name it. If that person is able to open the internet and reach to a place to get content, that is 
okay? You are doing digital marketing already. Yeah. So the difference is whether you're doing it right or not. <laughs> all right. So again, you can become a content creator. Again, all the content that you create, sometimes creativity is only one part of the story. You probably need to have a little bit more information, all right? Things that people want to see, all right? To be able to attract them and to eventually get them to buy something from you. I know, I know some of you are probably thinking, but we are marketers, we are not salespeople, all right? But still, to get people to buy something from you, you have to be able to inform and influence. Ah, so you can see where I'm going with this idea, yeah? You have to understand people. Oh, no. Okay. So if those of you who are thinking, oh, no, I'm not very good at working with computers or machines, but you are pretty good in, uh, you know, influencing people, I guess digital marketing could be the thing for you. Yeah, yeah. All right. So again, those of you who are active on social media, I'm sure a lot of you have heard of people who call themselves influencers. Don't you ever wonder how much they make online? Yeah, 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 right? So if you are keen to also start maybe your own channel or, or to help a business set up some sort of online presence to attract people, uh, then being a social media manager could be the thing for you. All right, so what you do in here, you basically help a business promote their products, all right, or share useful information for customers to be able to digest and get, you know, more information or to, to be keen to check out your product or to buy something from the business. So uh, search engine optimization, okay? So uh, if you guys know Google, all right, so uh, how to get so-and-so's business, all right, listed on the Google search engine. All right. I mean, if somebody search for, okay, uh, where can I buy this pair, uh, this uh, washing machine today? All right. So you just type washing machine on Google search. So how can you get your shop or your business listed on the first page of Google? Is there a hack? Is there something specific we have to do? Of course there is. And you will be able to learn all this in the course as well. Yeah, we will be covering things like building websites, uh, knowing how to get listed on uh, Google, finding out what are the keywords that people typically will search for on Google, all right? Uh, all these small bits of a bit technical, I would say, uh, aspect of marketing that you will actually learn in part as part of your market research. Oh, very useful skill to have. Definitely something not to, not to miss out. Yeah, all right. Uh, paid advertising. I know, I know, some of you are saying, oh, but I, you know, the kind of ads that annoy you, hey, hello, okay? Now, that kind of ads is actually the very things that actually attract sales for business, all right? So if you can master this skill, basically, you are actually helping a business to get sales. I mean, those of you who have a little bit of working experience would know that a business actually basically lives on sales, the number of sales that you can uh, do online, correct? So sometimes knowing the tips and tricks of a good advertisement can help you a lot. So mastering this skill, again, you can actually market yourself as a pet advertising specialist for Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok, YouTube, uh, you name it, you will be able to probably put that product out in the most fantastic fashion so that people will be keen to buy from the business. Mm. Of course, any of you who have extra talent, very good on screen, very good in talking, you can become virtual event hosts. You know, what we call in layman terms, live streamers. Yeah, people who talk a lot. Yes. So these are the people who are also actually quite important when it comes to creating engagement online. I mean... People will like to shop, sure. But again, because of COVID, there's a lot of people who are probably still a little bit trauma of going out of their house. All right. So what's the next thing that they will do? They'll probably browse and browse and browse looking for something to do online. 
And in Asia, okay, just to share with you, statistically, all right, more and more people love to shop online. And especially when a business has live shopping experiences, all right, that is when you will get a lot of uh, response. Okay, a lot of people asking questions, a lot of people wanting to see you demonstrate your product or even do live explanation or demonstration of product, everything through online. So those of you who are exceptionally gifted, all right, in talking or maybe a more of a people or front-facing person, you can try out virtual event posts as your uh, potential career option. Uh, so far, feeling good about it? I hope so, lah. Huh? All right. So, what are the skills that you need to know how to do all that? Okay. So uh, there are a few modules here, basically about six modules. So the first part is about uh, social media marketing. So what what we'll do is we'll actually go through in eight days all the various online platforms that is used by businesses to market their product today. Okay, so don't worry because one day, one platform is enough time to go through, you know, the nitty ditty details and maybe some algorithms, the way the platform works. Why this platform keeps showing me this content? Huh? Uh, we will demystify that during the course as well. Okay, and I think some of you will love this because uh, uh, in my last two cohorts, when I actually go into the teaching TikTok, uh, we actually make TikTok videos in class. Yeah, okay, so those of you who are thinking, oh, you know, it's not going to cut and dry lecture class. No, 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 no. You can be assured that you will have to do that TikTok video. <laughs> All right, take it as a challenge. Those of you who love a challenge, you will love this class. All right, so at least, at least after this module, you will know, okay, who are these people who go to these kind of platforms? What kind of products that is suitable to be sold on this platform? Oh. How this platform people on this platform behave. All right, so you, you we will actually learn all this uh, inside, and you can also uh, benefit uh, from some case study sharing on how certain influencers become successful in that platform. Yeah, right. All right, so the second part is about uh, online copywriting. So basically, this is about writing. Yeah, those of you who are a little bit more introverted. You know, I don't like to face people, but I'm pretty good at writing. All right, so this is probably the module for you. Uh, what I like to say is uh, normally we play to our strength. Yeah, so if understanding people and influencing people and using words is something that we are keen to do more of, then why not learn a skill that can actually get people to buy from you? Ah, all right, so we'll go through psychology. Uh, psychology of content. Uh, so you will actually learn what exactly is microcopy, what exactly, when people look at your words, they look at your text, what actually goes on in a person's mind. What is that thing that can trigger people to press that buy button? Everybody, all businesses want that, yeah. But how do you write it in such a way or what do you do on that piece of content to actually get them to do it? Ah, all right. So this is like the secrets of the universe, but you will find out how, all right, in this module, ah, just by the power of words. Ah, okay. So of course, again, you will be able to do a, a basic guideline, okay, for social media management. Some of you might be very lucky to actually join a company to help people manage their social media. And maybe there are certain do's and don'ts that you want to know on that particular social media, which includes copywriting as well. So it's a very good skill to have. It is also very useful for you guys who are going to probably design a poster or going to design some sort of a web page to actually introduce your product. Yeah. So a lot of things to learn, especially when it comes to psychology of people who are coming to your website. Psychology of people who actually read your content. Mm. All right. So social media marketing part two is more about engagement, okay? Doing live stream, all right? Or, you know, how to hack the algorithm in such a way, all right, that it works for you, okay? 
And some of you might be keen to explore this particular module because maybe you have seen a lot of social media nowadays, right? They have this uh, online shop kind of thing, right? So you can actually buy something straight from social media. All right, so how to set up that shop? Huh? Okay, so typically I have had students who are actually keen to help uh, traditional businesses. You know, those businesses that has a small shop down the street, but they don't really have a Facebook, they don't really have uh, Instagram, right? So they set out to actually help them get online, selling products online like a virtual shop. So uh, we will actually teach all this as well, okay? You will understand how to lead people to know a brand and to actually buy from a brand. And of course, we will also share some pretty good organizational skills yeah, for you to build up your own library of case studies. Okay, just for you to become a better digital marketer. Yeah. So, of course, planning, organization, uh, things that actually bring sales to the business, we will cover in this particular module. Okay, web design. Ah, ha, 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 ha. All right. So, some of you probably thinking, hmm, this writing thing sounds like something that I want to do. All right. So, writing, I mean, you love to write. You have a lot of things to share to the internet. Okay. So why not I start a blog, all right? So in this module, I will actually teach you how to set up a website, okay? We will probably cover uh, three different platforms. Uh, we have Wix, we have Shopify, and we also have WordPress, okay? So uh, I will also, uh, you know, teach you what's the market demand when it comes to these three different uh, website building platforms. And for those of you who are a little bit, how I say, a worried, whether you have the necessary IT skills to be a website developer, don't worry because a lot of things nowadays is just click and drag. Yeah, all right, no coding involved. All right, so I can hear some of you deep breath already. So it's very good. All right, yes, okay, no coding involved. All right, so don't have to worry about that. It's all click and drag, but we will learn more of the user considerations. When people come to your website, how do you make your website easy for people to navigate? All right. How do you get your website to be, uh, to appear on the search engine? All right. So which leads down to the next module, which is search engine optimization. All right. So your website, brand new website, all content is inside there, but how does Google know that I'm truly giving value to people who are interested in my website, all right? So of course, when we talk about Google, we will also share uh, the Google Analytics, which is the data analytics part of the uh, you know, web analytics, how to actually know how many people actually come to your website, how long these people stay in your website. Is the content in your website interesting enough to keep people going? Or do people really browse everywhere in your website? What else you can add in your website to make things interesting or people to stay longer? Yeah, right? So we'll cover, you know, content-based website, e-commerce-based website as well, all right? And also some image and video optimization techniques. I mean, posting an image or a video online can only get you that far. But you need to be found from search engines. If people don't find you, you don't get traffic, you don't get clicks, you don't get subscribers. So those of you who is dreaming of becoming a YouTuber or maybe setting up a blog that actually makes money, this is the thing to pay attention to. Of course, just like all things, uh, this is uh, going to be a little bit more technical than the previous modules. But don't worry, uh, I'm here to actually guide you through every single step of the way. And, you know, at the end of the day, you can safely choose something that you're very comfortable in doing. All right. It could be maybe, you know, uh, only being a YouTuber or maybe on Instagram. All right. You want to put your 100% focus on that. So for your capstone project, it's going to be a very fun thing. You get a chance to choose your own path. All right, you can actually choose to become a blogger. But what we need you to do in the Captain Project is basically to plan how you're going to market your product 
or how you're going to market your content to an audience. So we actually, you know, get you to, to prepare a slide, about 10 uh, slides, okay, for a presentation. And then you will present it to the class and we will actually, again, do the trainer mentoring thing to help you fine tune as you go along. All right, mm -hmm. uh, Wan Ren, sorry, I'm yes. so sorry to stop you here, but I think mm. we're a little bit over time. So okay. I think I will stop you here. So yeah. for, any, uh, for anyone who wants more details about this program, you can check out our landing page. Uh, for now, I will hand it over to our next program, the Data Analyst Program, and we have Desmond, our trainer, to present to us. Sorry for the delay, everybody, at Desmond. Um, over to you, Desmond. All right, okay. Can I, everyone see my screen? Yep. Okay, cool. So, um... Yeah, so I'll just try to make things a little bit quick, right? Because I do know we are short on time. Okay, so um, I believe some of you here, uh, thank you for listening. And um, you are probably, right, hearing a lot you know, on the internet right, and everywhere about you know, this thing called data analytics. And uh, this wonderful thing, you know, that is now taking the world by storm, right? Uh, in this uh, past two to three years. Okay, so now the question is, what is it? Okay, and the question is, how can you get into it? So my answer for you here is, uh, join this course. Okay, basically that. All right. Um, let me just uh, dive a little bit deeper. Okay, and let's sort of walk you through a little bit more on why this course is created and you know, what you know we are trying to target. Uh, you know, when the, this course right is in place itself. Okay, so um. We will walk through the breakdowns of the modules. Okay, I'm just going to dive very quickly and walk you through right, you know, what we will be learning uh, as you uh, join us on this uh, three months journey. Okay, so in the first segment, uh, as you pick up this course itself, we will first understand what is data science okay, and where can I make use of data science. So um, five years ago, when I was teaching this, my name is Desmond, by the way, right, five years ago, right? Uh, this, it kind of heralded the coming of data science by this phrase, right? Data science, right, or um, AI, right? It is the new right, electricity. So today, right, it's all around us, right? It is everywhere, right? This, right, in, in your mobile phone, right? In um, everything that you do encounter, there is data science, right? And there is, right, machine learning itself. So in this course, you'll definitely be picking up, right? Machine learning, right? And even uh, data science. So. Data science first, right, in terms of the analytics, right, the visualizations and understanding, you know, what makes data work, okay, initially first. So we'll talk about that over here and then AI just a little bit down the road. So let's talk about it. Okay, so you understand some of the basics, right? So what is in the basics itself? So for people, right, who have little to no understanding of data and the science of it, Okay. We want to kind of bring you through, right, in this three days course. So it's 24 hours, right? So I've seen some people ask questions, right, with relation to, you know, how long is the duration of the course itself? So I did reply to some people. Now, specifically, right, the course is going to be nine to six, okay, and different modules will be in place. So basics of data science over here is just one module, right? And kind of eight hours a day now. Not necessarily the full eight hours will be dedicated to class itself. Though it could be, you know, uh, six hours of teaching and then two hours of, you know, um, some interactive uh, hands-on and so on. Okay, so there'll be many of those as we journey through. Okay, so let me just walk you through. So data science is indeed, right, the buzzword of today, right? Being the buzzword of today, right? Um, it was not five years ago, it was the buzzword of tomorrow, right? Five years later now in 2022, right? It's the buzzword of today. And if you were to join, right? Uh, for sure, there will be a lucrative job opportunities up ahead, right? Because um, just a few months back, right? Or even uh, this past two years, right? The Singapore government has indicated that there is a need for a lot of people in tech, but there is, there just isn't enough talent. So you can be that talent itself just by taking up this course. All right, so understanding what data science is about, all right, and is the idea of trying to understand data, right? So here we have this topic of data literacy, right? Whereby you want to ask and question your data, right? And try to figure out, okay, what is my data trying to tell me, okay? With these kind of questions, right? You want to kind of convert them. And the conversion is done using this thing called data visualizations, right? So data visualization, right? You know, in probably 10, 15 years ago, is this thing called 
uh, BI, right, or business intelligence. Okay, but here, right, it's very more, uh, very much more uh, towards uh, making sure, right, you have a good um, story, right, and have a good understanding of what data you're trying to represent and also who you're representing that data to. Okay, so how can you apply the above into the real world? So we want to understand that. Okay, so it's just three days. Okay, pretty short and sweet. Okay, but you know, these three days will help you to really set your foot down and start to understand the different term, the terminology, right? Terms in data science, right? All the difficulties, you know, that, you know, all the difficult jargons because in data science, it's almost like a, a special club, right? Of people, right? Who, right? Once you enter, right? You will start to hear that, hey, there's so many jargons. What are all of them? Okay, so you really want to learn, right? So these three days will help walk you through that. So post those three days, right, we'll embark right, on a four days course of using this thing called Microsoft Excel for data analysis. Now, why Microsoft Excel, right? Some you may ask. Microsoft Excel, right, is a tool that is used by 750 million people around the world. So I believe every one of us here would have touched right, Microsoft Excel at least, right, so far, right? You could be using it, right, in your day-to-day -day job, right? It could be, you could be using it just, you know, as simply as trying to write out a table, right? But okay, it is actually a really powerful tool that a lot of companies have, right? And, right, you can help bring it to its full potential, right, by going through this course itself. Okay, so um, Satya Nadella, which is uh, uh, Microsoft CEO, has proclaimed it to be his most important consumer product. Okay, so obviously, why learn? Okay? A lot of companies have it, right? We already know that. So you will also know a little bit about it. So it is actually, right, something that we all have on hand, but we just want to learn just a little bit more to make sure that, you know, we fully a, we are fully able right, to control right, and make use of the skill itself. Right? This tool called Excel is a very marketable skill. Right? And um, as of now, right, you know, it's really powerful. Right? Uh, and you, know, you definitely will be able to hit the ground running and even help right, uh, work and make your company better right? uh, at, or the, the next job that you're going to do better just by uh, using Excel. All right, so what's the objective of uh, this course itself? So in this course, right, the objective is very much for us to learn, right, some of the, and start to, you know, encounter and make full use, right, and learn some of the different jargons, right? So we will do things such as data cleaning, right, transformation of our data, and then analyzing our data itself. So um, a lot of people do say, 80% um, of the work right, in data science or right, in data analytics is data cleaning itself. So, you know, using this tool, right, in, which is Excel, right, you have um, a lot, right, to, uh, to actually, you learn a lot, right, to be able to help, you know, to go and uh, clean up the data for whatever company that you'll be joining. Now, so what will you actually be learning? So some of these things you may think that, you know, they are actually pretty straightforward, like for example, Functions, right, and even pivot tables. So functions and pivot tables are straightforward. Why? Why? Because uh, you know everyone thinks that we know them, right? Equals sum. Okay, but okay, there are many other things as well. We have power query. We have macro recording, right? And we even have what if analysis. So power query, right, is part of Excel, you know, as an ETL too. Whereby you know, see, I'm starting to use some jargons, but I try not to you know bog everyone down with jargon. So basically, this term called extract, transform, and load, right? Basically, we want to massage our data to make sure our data is in the right state right for us to make use of it okay so we want to work with a lot of data right and try to comprehend them okay so now this course itself right is very um industry driven right and it's uh very focused in trying to make sure you land that next job right so how so so we are focused in capstones so we have right four capstone project so over here you will see this first capstone project in the first capstone project you will actually be making use of excel right and creating interactive dashboards so the target over here right is to kind of build up Right, um, you know, and kind of build upon right all the skills that you'll be picking up. So later we we'll talk about this thing called SQL, right? So we also build upon that as well. Okay, so um, we want to do this thing called data storytelling. Okay, so um, with visualizations, data storytelling is very important, right? Because only with a good story, right, can we sell right our dashboard. Okay, so we can tell it to the right person. We can influence them to make decisions. Okay, so some of these terms which I'm using is actually really important in the whole data analytics space. 
Okay, I know if you do join this course, right, you will understand why they are used, right, and you will uh, get on board, right, and um, you know, fully be in this whole you know, almost like a per se like cult, all right, but not not exactly like that. So making use of Excel, right, you will uh, learn make use of everything they have picked up, all the functions, the dashboarding, all right. You take the data, right, you know, with the domain that you're interested in. If you have come from marketing, you have come from uh, sales, if you have come from the travel industry, you can go take make use of those data, massage them, right, and make sure you know you and come up with uh, a dashboard, right, that you know you could uh, be reporting to the manager or to the boss or the CEO itself. Okay, so you can come up with dashboards like this. Okay, so now this dashboard is actually a pretty simple dashboard. This is a HR attrition dashboard. Okay, so this is something that can definitely be created using Excel, right? Even something like this as well. So this is more towards uh, you know, the younger growth, right, of a company. Okay, so the post that, right, post you picking up Excel, right, uh, you'll be actually making use and learning this language called SQL. So SQL is this thing called Structured Query Language. So it's actually a very important language to pick up, right, because it helps you gain access to the data itself, right? So I know we want to go through the process of each ETL, right, and be able to pull out our data, right, and be able to massage them right, and help us so, to really, really extract the right data, right? So being a data analyst, it's important for you to access the data. It's also important for you to be able to get, to get the right data, right? The, the right data. So you want to load the data, you want to uh, perform um, analysis on the data, you want to make sure that you are able to extract the correct data. So here you learn things such as joints and so on and so forth. Okay, I won't dive too deep into this, but just to highlight, right, uh, SQL, right, Structured Query Language for people who are hearing this for the first time, right, actually forms one of the most base languages, right, there is, right, in um, accessing databases. So the moment you pick up this language, you'll be able to access, right, almost all databases, right? Obviously, there are variants and flavors, okay, no, but the moment you understand it, okay, most databases work the same, okay? So now, post that, right, you want to make use of this language, okay, uh, which we have learned to extract data, right, create your own database, right, and then work on an Excel dashboard itself. So we're kind of building on, right, like I was mentioning. So you don't want to build more dashboards from it. Okay, so here, right, you will actually uh, make use of uh, Excel as a tool, right, uh, but linking to a proper database and pulling out the data and creating the dashboards. And then, hit, and then from there, you will go ahead and do your data storytelling and so on. All right. So same thing, you'll be able to create dashboards, right, all using Excel itself. Okay. So um, here's the thing, okay? So dashboards like these are very nice, very beautiful. You'll definitely learn how to create all of them. So now, um, let's talk about segment two, right? So actually this course is broken up into three segments, right? In segment two, this is where people would think that it is scary. And I'm gonna tell you the truth, right? It is a little bit scary, all right? But here's the thing, right? There is the word science, right, in data science, okay? So the data science word typically indicates some sort of math and statistics, okay? Um, I'm not gonna lie to you and tell you that, hey, you know, for sure, it will be really easy, okay? But it's not, okay? It's not that easy, but it is definitely challenging, right? And it will be immensely rewarding at the end of the day. So why do you want to pick up math and stats for data science? So let me just show you this. So, oh, well, there's this little uh, meme over here that says, oh, me, right? I'm interested in artificial intelligence. But hey, artificial intelligence, right? You've got to learn statistics. Okay, so um, from time immemorial, people who used to be, um, you know, statisticians, right? They are the ones who are dabbling in AI, right? So um, that's why it's a little bit scary. So you see statistics, it's a little bit like that goal, all right, uh, behind you. Right? Another one over here. So if you do learn this, right, so you're interested in machine learning, AI, right, as a computer newbie, right, but then when you start to learn about this thing called data structures and algorithms, you start to look at, hey, you know, am I going to drown? And then when you see mathematics, right, it's like, oh, no, I'm gone, all right? And last but not least, right, because I have to say, who wants to learn Python? Everybody raises their hand. Who wants to learn math, right? Nobody raises their hand and say, who wants, who, who wants to be a data scientist? Everyone wants to be a data scientist. So for everyone over here, um, here's the thing, right? Data science, right, requires math, okay? And the data scientists earn really well, right? And they help shape, right, a lot of companies, right, in terms of the decisions that they'll make, 
Okay, but okay, there's always right uh, a little bit of a caveat over here. Okay, so it could be challenging for some people. But okay, I'll tell you just a little bit more. So how do we actually then want to teach you this without making you drown, just like in the mean before? Okay, so what in the, what we will do is in this course, right, these ten days, right, we'll kind of walk you through what is some of the foundations, right, in, in that map of the math, right, behind data science and machine learning itself. The key idea here is this: you don't want to be a data analyst and you join a company and someone asks you a question and you have no idea how to answer them. Right, so there is a need for you to understand underneath the hood what is happening. So, how does that work? Okay, it's a little bit like you know, if you were to drive a car, right? A lot of people may say, Hey, I don't really know how the engine works. Okay, but in this course itself, right, we need you to know what are some of the fundamentals of how the engine works, but I do not need you to tell me specifically and prove to me that the engine actually works because the engine does work, so math already works. So that's the main important difference over here, all right? Uh, you just need to know how things are working, but you don't need to know and fix the things that are working, right? Basically that, okay? So just the theory, right? It's more than enough for you to get through, okay? So what will you be learning? You'll be learning things such as matrices, calculus, statistics, right? Statistics or business analytics, and even optimization techniques as well. So now, some people, the moment you see this, oh, no, it's so difficult, right? And the truth is, okay, um, we will help you, right, to learn, and we will help you to understand, right, how these different, right, uh, pillars, right, in math, right, will help you, right, in understanding data science. Okay, so again, the word science, hopefully, you know, I'm not scaring everyone over here. So segment three is where we dive into the exciting stuff. So once you know you kind of learn uh, that what visualizations are, you learn you know what you know, the science is really about right, in terms of the mathematics. Okay, and finally you know you want to dive into segment three, which is kind of the most exciting part of the course itself. Here we will talk about Power BI, right, which is an industry uh, tool that everyone right, is uh, making use of. And you want to learn this thing called Python. Right? Python is a language that even kids are using these days. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about that. Okay, so we'll, we'll learn about, firstly, Microsoft Power BI. So Microsoft Power BI, uh, right now, right, is industry leading right, because Microsoft is heavily advertising it. And a lot of companies are picking it up. The main idea here is that you want to learn tools that company needs, right? You don't want to learn tools that companies don't need, right? So you don't want to pick up something that, you know, oh, once you get out of this course, nobody is going to make use of. So Microsoft Power BI, a lot of companies are using. So it's only four days, right? It's really short, okay? And in this course itself, right, you will make use of, uh, you know, with this tool, which is really easy to pick up okay? and be able to help, right, present data, uh, you know, with it. Okay, so a little bit like Excel well, and create dashboards from it as well. So we'll dive a little bit deeper by creating multiple pages, right, in Microsoft Power BI. Okay, so uh, you learn the various features, you plot charts, right, you create dashboards, and obviously we're working in real world cases itself. Okay, and finally, you know, you kind of have a project, right, a uh, capstone on it as well. So this capstone, right, uh, will be, you know, almost the same right, as how you would represent yourself in Excel, okay? But however, here you're using the tool, and right? obviously, you know, you are kind of expected to use advanced functions, right? Because after four days, right, if the tool is simple, you'll be able to pick up really advanced functions and you'll be able to uh, present it from there, okay? So I won't dive too deep, you'll come up with two uh, charts like this, and even more, right, and even more, okay? So this is some simple ones, okay, for sure, right? Some charts have been really amazing, which I have seen over the past two years. Okay, so um, finally, right, you learn a little bit more about Python. Okay, so now maybe the question is why Python? Okay, so uh, Python, right, for the past two years, right, has actually overtaken Java, right, to be the most in demand language in the world. That's not to say that, you know, uh, you know, everyone should just abandon uh, all other languages and only learn Python. That's not true. Uh, obviously, other languages, right, are there as well. But Python, right, is something that definitely a lot of employers would look for, right? And, right, for sure, it is one of the easiest to pick up, right? It's easy to pick it up. Okay, and there's a huge search, everybody is interested in it. Okay, so 
why learn Python, right? With Python itself, right? You can do visualization, you can analyze data, you can do and code, right? Machine learning, right? You can create web pages, you can do, um, you know, scrape the internet, right? You can do so much things with Python itself, okay? But obviously, you're really, re really wanting to learn it in this course, right? For machine learning. Whereby we want to learn a little bit more about AI, right? All the math that you have learned, okay? We will kind of make it use of it over here, right? In machine learning itself, okay? Um, with machine learning, right, you will pick up a lot of uh, problem solving skills, right? And it's actually high in demand because everybody you know, wants and hears about AI, but not everyone knows what happens, right? You know, with AI itself, right? The bottom line is this, okay? Um, with companies going through digital transformation, right? And they, everyone wants to make use of analytics, right? When you pick this up, your skill will be in demand. Okay, so um, post that, right? We will be having this thing called a capstone, right? So you'll be creating models, right? You'll be um, creating um, machine learning algorithms, right? And you'll be uh, trying to push yourself, right? To um, help, right? Represent your data and do predictions, okay? So th the magic here, right, is in predictions. Okay, so that's kind of where, you know, you uh, pick up, well, make use of the skills that I picked up, right, and really affect it. Okay, so at the end of this course, right, you pick up the following tools, like I've mentioned, right, Excel, right, and um, MS SQL, right, with SQL, Microsoft Power BI, and Python itself, right, these will be the tools that you will be really familiar with at the end of the day, right, so what are some of the techniques, right, that you pick up, you will learn this thing called ETL, data analysis, right, data visualization, data storytelling, right, dashboarding, machine learning, right, working with the cloud, right, math and statistics for data science, right, writing SQL queries and more, okay? So here's the thing, right? Um, every day, right, we would have, you know, the trainer, right, be teaching you and having presentations. So presentations may not necessarily take up the entire day. So like I mentioned, if it's eight hours, right, it could be just uh, potentially five to six hours of presentation. And then we have a lot of hands-on exercises and even group exercises as well. So when we do have those capstones, right, those capstone days really, right, are for you to work on your capstone and potentially even schedule timing with your trainers, right, to be able to help understand what's happening and how they can help you to uh, shape your uh, project better. Okay, so we will have uh, assessments at the end of uh, each non-capstone module as well. Okay, so thank you, right, for listening. Okay, let me just uh, have just one last word to add in, right? We have ran many cohorts, maybe close to um, 15, right, or almost 20 cohorts, right, over the past uh, two years. Okay, a lot of our, of our training right, have gone on right, to secure really lucrative jobs, right, and uh, their jobs, right, have come really fast, right? Almost, uh, you know, even before they graduate from the course itself. Okay, so this is something that, you know, I would highly encourage you, right? If you are keen to pick it up, right? Please go ahead, right? And uh, approach us for this. All right, thank you so much. Thank you, Desmond, for your presentation. Now, moving on, uh, we have the Cyber Security Associate powered by KPMG program. Over to you, James. Hey, hi. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, Hope you guys still have the energy to take on, um, you know, the last uh, job role. So uh, uh, now uh, I like to talk about the Cyber Security Associate part by KPMG. Uh, we have started um, uh, the SQS uh, similar program. It was a six months program that started at the uh, beginning of this year, uh, and. Uh, when we started the SUS program, we wanted to kind of bring in the best of uh, cybersecurity certification courses. At the same time, on top of that, we wanted to really introduce to our trainees uh, with real life, uh, real case uh, on the job training with KPMG. Uh, and, and without that, you know, with this program where we can uh, bring the theory as well as the uh, actual uh, on-the-job training uh, with our partner KPMG, uh, it will kind of give you uh, a more opportunity to land yourself a job. So, without further ado, let me uh, let, let me just start. Now, um, this is the 
cybersecurity landscape uh, that is that was reported by the Cybersecurity Agency of Singapore uh, for 2021. The cyber landscape last year was caught up with increasingly sophisticated threats and uh, more brazen threat actors. And as, as you know, the extent to which you know, the effects of cyber attacks spilled over into the physical realm is quite startling. So you guys will know that uh, recently there was a OCBC smishing attack where customers of OCBC actually lost up to 8.5 million uh, cash, right, core cash. So this is really real. Um, and, and in fact, um, cybersecurity is one of the passwords today, especially when the government is moving towards digitalization. Um, in Singapore, uh, last year, of all the crimes, 48% accounts for cybercrime. 137 cases of ransomware last year, which is a 50% increase. And more than 4,000 computers are infected daily with malicious programs. And as, as we, you know, this is a very common uh, uh, term now, phishing. Uh, more than 50K of phishing URLs were detected. So why have I shown you this? Um, this is just to give you a heads up how uh, the impact of cybersecurity is today. And we look at the top uh, in-demand job and skills by the employers. And you see cybersecurity as uh, one of them. So uh, the key question is why should you join this program? Uh, there is currently a talent gap in Singapore. Uh, and it remains the biggest challenge in Singapore, uh, right? And uh, in, in one of the studies recently, uh, there is actually uh, in the region, in Asia Pacific, uh, there's a talent gap of close to 1.4 million, right? So this is a, quite, a, quite a big number. Um, and uh, really to, you know, uh, to help to mitigate this gap, uh, it's pretty much for us to help provide upskilling and reskilling opportunities for new and mid career professionals moving into cybersecurity jobs and helping the existing pool of cybersecurity professionals advance your career through deep skills training and leadership development. So, um, I think uh, for this program, it's, it's very important to note that there is a high prerequisite. We are looking at um, with a minimum two years of experience uh, with knowledge in networking services, security, uh, monitoring applications. Uh, if, you are, if you are currently working as an IT support technician or you are a networks administrator, uh, you are more than welcome to join. Uh, while we have set up a higher standard is because uh, in the last SGS program, it was six months. For this FCCP, it's four and a half months, which means to say that um, you, will, you will undergo a, a quite a packed uh, program where you undergo a one and a half months of classroom trainings, followed by three months of OJT. Yep, so this is uh, uh, what we covered in this four and a half months. And I will quickly run through uh, the eight uh, modules that you'll be taking. So for the first one, uh, the Network Plus is a course that will allow you to have basic understanding of how network function. And with today's cyber attacks, uh, this knowledge is uh, invaluable. So, um, the next one, the next course that uh, is within this course will be the Security Plus. And by the way, both are from CompTIA, which is again, an uh, established name in the cybersecurity realm. Uh, this course will help you to establish core knowledge required of any cybersecurity role, right? So the Security Plus is a, uh, it will provide you a springboard to intermediate level cybersecurity jobs. Now the next course that uh, you will undergo will be the Azure Fundamentals. And uh, this course is intended uh, for 
trainees who, you know, just beginning to work with cloud-based solutions and services or are new to Azure. And it will give you an opportunity to prove knowledge of cloud concepts, Azure services, Azure workloads, security, and privacy in Azure, as well as Azure pricing and support. The next course will be the AWS Certified Cloud Pract Practitioner, uh, which allows you to know more about AWS services and their use cases. So companies are searching for people who can understand AWS cloud costs, as well as describe uh, AWS services like compute, network, database, and storage. The next course is CISA. Uh, and uh, CISA is uh, by ISACA, which is a well-recognized information certification by ISACA in audit control and security of information system. And this course will help you help to certify um, your competency in the field of IT security, IT audit, IT risk management, and governance. And this is by far one of the most recognized IT audit uh, certification in cybersecurity. Series is the only credential focused on enterprise. IT risk management. Okay. And um, in today's landscape, this is again one of the in demand uh, certification courses. Now, the next course is CG. And CG uh, is a course that targets enterprise leadership. And uh, with this uh, course, uh, the intent is to ensure that IT infrastructure matches and support the business goals of an organization in an effective way. And the, the last course that you undergo will be CISSP. So CISSP by ISC Square is perhaps uh, like uh, getting a master's, master's degree uh, as opposed to getting a degree, right? Uh, and uh, this certification course is one of the most reputable certificates in cybersecurity. Um, the credential is known across the globe uh, by the likes of Google, IBM, PNG, so on and so forth. Uh, and why this course is important, especially uh, in recent trends that such as BYOD, bring your own device, cloud compute, uh, big data, social media engagement uh, is expanding. Uh, and enterprises are adopting such technologies quickly. So this is by far one of the, uh, I would say, the, the most in demand certification course in all the seven courses. Now, uh, after having taken the um, classroom trainings, uh, you will then uh, undertake the three months on the job training. So um, this is where you, you have a taste of what really goes on behind the scenes, right? Uh, and uh, you'll be assigned to a cybersecurity role within KPMG, um, depending on your choice as well as your um, background. So some of you who are more technical, may go into VAPT, uh, and possibly forensics and incident response. Uh, some of you who are less technical, uh, again, uh, might go into more on the governance side of things. Uh, and, and this is pretty much um, the KPMG cybersecurity uh, framework, right? So they have cyber strategy and governance cyber transformation, cyber defense, and cyber response, right? And uh, the, this, is, this is just the possible OJT roles that uh, you may be assigned to. Um, but of course, uh, by the time you reach to the OJT stage, uh, it pretty much depends on the projects that uh, K KPMG has uh, gotten from the clients. 
uh, and then you will be assigned to uh, a, part, a particular project. Uh, but rest assured that during OJT, there will be a, a project leader to guide you, uh, to teach you, and uh, you'll learn the ropes uh, for your assignment. Uh, I have a last slide, uh, which is uh, a feedback from our SG United trainee who has passed uh, the program and managed to get a job with KPMG. Uh, and mind you, he is, um, you know, he, 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 he is not young, right? So, but uh, he is very hardworking and very committed to want to be successful in the program. Um, so this is uh, Kevin, right? Kevin is uh, our ex SUS trainee who has uh, moved on to his career in KPMG. Uh, and this is just some feedback or encouragement that he like to uh, provide uh, for those who is interested in this in this uh, program. So uh, he mentioned that uh, our training module is structured and is curated by KPMG and Alpha. So importantly, when you embark on this journey, pace yourself. Uh, we will give you ample time to study, right? We have um, several LHUB trainers with the industry experience. Attempt all classes exercise that or assessment that's given or assignments that's given. That's the best way to learn rapidly. Um, and then important is the right attitude, right? So each and every of our SCT pro SCTP program is like a marathon, right? Uh, you need the right attitude and you need a lot of endurance especially for this, um, where uh, the program is very packed in four and a half months. So, um, yeah. So if you are interested, uh, you can sign up for this program. Uh, that's all. Uh, thank you. If there's any questions, uh, please feel free to share on the Q&A. Thanks, James. Thank you. All right, so I think we have all come to the end of our presentation. So I think throughout the webinar, everyone has been putting their questions in the Q&A box, and I hope we have answered most of them. If not, uh, do take this opportunity now to put in any questions and answers you have, and we will address them. Um, so I think it's getting quite late. If no one has any more questions, um, we will end off here. So... Before you go off, uh, we have already inserted the URL to our landing page in the chat box. And you can also scan this QR code to assess an ending page. And not to worry, we will actually be sending the webinar recording to all the attendees here for your reference. And do remember to complete the application process on our website to be considered for the program. So, yeah, sorry. All right. So on behalf of NTC Learning Hub, thank you for joining us today. And have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.